So, so, so the new thing uh, that floating wind brings in is the ability to have floating wind, in a, to have offshore wind energy working at depths which are larger than 40 meters. So uh, the North Sea has been this big, big demonstration case. Uh, we have more than 5,000 turbines out there now. Um, it works well. Uh, we are almost down at the uh, cost level similar to coal-fired energy there. Um, but this is all due to the small depths. Uh, so nearly everything there uh, is installed at 40 meters or smaller. Uh, when you get deeper, uh, so you may have countries, of course, that are not blessed uh, by a North Sea in, in the backyard. Uh, then in the deeper waters, it simply becomes too expensive to bottom fix the turbines. And, and, and you can almost feel it if you look at this and you imagine you should add this much water underneath, it becomes very wobbly. And, and to avoid this wobbliness, uh, you need to make it very stiff. Uh, and that would mean a lot of material. Uh, and that's where the cost goes up. So then at some point, uh, it will be cheaper to have it on a floating foundation instead. So you have uh, the floating support structure here, and then it's moored with anchor lines, and then you produce the wind energy this way. Right now we have something like 20 uh, floating wind turbines in, of full-scale size in the world. Uh, and this means we have not yet had the industry uh, market mechanisms to pull down the price. So that's what is happening now. And, and you see the big companies, they, they are coming in now uh, with their specific knowledge in different fields. Also uh, earlier oil companies, uh, because they believe they can actually move this market here and move the technology to something that, that is feasible. So what do we then do at DTU uh, as part of that? So, so of course uh, at DTU Wind Energy we, we know the turbine, the aerodynamics, the structural dynamics, the hydrodynamics very well. Um, and, and what we can do there is of course to make precise uh, calculation models for the response. Because when you have the turbine out there, of course you have the rotor, so it will have loads from that. You have the waves and, and the hydrodynamics here, which will also create a forcing. So you have response to two different stochastic sources. Um, at the same time, you have the ability to pitch the blades. So this is how the tur turbine controls itself. Um, so you also have active mechanisms you need to master. So there's a control system design on top of the structural design. One of the things you can do offshore is you, you can have very large turbines. So uh, you, you see turbines now with rotors up to 240 meters in, in diameter. Uh, they would be difficult to install on, on land. Uh, also to have an efficient wind energy plant, uh, you typically install now 50 units, for example. Uh, where would you do that on land? Install 50 units. Uh, you need a big space for that. Uh, wind turbines, they make wakes. So this means you, you cannot put the next turbine right after the first. So you typically space with perhaps six diameters of rotor. Uh, so to put up 50 turbines, you would need seven by seven plus one turbine. Um, and that of course requires space. That's what you can get offshore. 